Hey, what is up YouTube? I am having an identity crisis. I just have been doing so many things lately and sometimes I find it hard to label myself as an individual. Like, am I content creator guy? Am I gym guy? Am I book illustrator guy? Like, I guess this is really the type of guy that I am because that is my job. But what kind of book illustrator guy? Am I tattoo guy? Am I mushroom guy? Am I webcore guy? And I guess I am all of those guys and many more, but sometimes it can be hard to distill that into a succinct statement about yourself. But in all of this thinking about my identity, I thought, what better way to perceive myself than to go through all of my sketchbooks that I have made since like the third grade. So I was maybe like nine. Is that how old you are when you're in third grade? I don't really know how old kids are. I do want to try and go in chronological order. So I'm going to have to go through these very quickly just to see the dates of all of them. We're not going to go through every single one because I think there's about 40 and we're not going to go through every single page because that's just simply that uh, would be excruciating. I did not pre-screen these, and when I look for the dates, I will not be looking at the art within so that you can get my live and honest reaction. And I think I'm gonna be pretty much okay until we get to about um, like high school Tumblr era, and that's when I'm going to want to go ahead and fold in on myself. Okay, so the first one that we are going to be looking at here is from 2010 and it does not have a back to the sketchbook. So don't know really what happened there. Um, right off the bat, I'm gonna say that uh, anime was in for me. That was, that was it. Vocaloid, anime, Pokemon, that was kind of my thing. And so I was sort of, you know, creating my own Vocaloid I don't know how I'm going to, uh, I'm starting to feel a little nervous <laughs> talking about who are these people? <laughs> Ooh. Anyways, I was saying that I don't really know how I'm going to do this. Like, I don't know if, if I should be talking. I guess I'll sort of flip through and if I need to talk, I will, I will talk. These were all colored pencil, by the way. This is like fully, colored pencil. And I remember this drawing specifically. Was there another? I feel like there was a couple of like fruit themed girls. This one of course is apple, as you can see with this apple motif and her, um, not really sure how the hair is reading apple, but uh, the shadows, oh my goodness. Like, oh, she's so surprised. And there's a, no wonder because there's a light sort of shining on her that is casting a shadow onto her body. Um, but I was really proud of this. I remember this being like my magnum opus in 2010. And this would be a self portrait, of course. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's like a, this is the cherry girl, uh, of course. Like, and uh, can't have cherry and apple girl without grape girl. Ooh, rough, rough draft and final. Oh, I see. So I sort of, the orange is the rough draft and the black is the final. This is sexy. Love her ballet flats. This could be relevant uh, in 2023 because ballet flats are back, aren't they? She's sort of <laughs> falling, I guess. She's got a band-aid, looks like she's already fallen. Mm, this is a child. <laughs> Yes! Oh, Slay, Olympic like, speed skating representation. My wings are invisible, but I still fly. So true, 2010. The girls. Oh, wow. I remember being proud of this one too, because I mean, look, look at this. Classic, classic fail phase. Oh God, I know I was eating this up. I was drawing this and I was just <laughs> wanting him so bad. I was probably drawing him like, I need him. Ah, <gasps> oh, there they are. 
sort of signing my name in Japanese, by the way. I am a quarter Japanese, but <laughs> so MG. And that would be the end of 2010. So this is gonna be a long video. Oh God. 2013 to 2014. This was, okay, so we're kind of, all right. We're jumping, I think, immediately into high school. I must have gotten, I think I had middle school ones and I got rid of them because I only kept sort of the best one from my childhood, which is sad, but it just, the box was too much. It was too heavy, so. Yeah, and we're sort of getting into TF2 and Portal at this time. <laughs> this is triggering for me right now because like I just watched the Izzy's Iceberg video with my interweb series characters and made that post on Instagram that y'all don't know how to act, okay? I posted that thing on my Instagram and it, it got, it was too much, okay? It's too much for 2023. Let's accept that this was bad and move on. I kind of think this is all pencil. Oh yes, I remember I was so into triangles at this time. This was sort of the welcome to Night Vale. Triangle, ugh, oh, dream boys. <laughs> Booty. Yeah! Yes! Oh, okay, this, listen, this still stands up. This still slays. A little bit of anatomy practice with no reference, by the way. I'm sure I was not looking at reference to draw these. I was just sort of getting these male bodies from my imagination. Okay, that's pretty good. Chicken nuggers. <laughs> One classy bitch. <laughs> Again, more anatomy practice with no reference, I'm sure. Mm, and there it is. And that would go ahead and be Cecil from Welcome to Night Vale. And that would again be Cecil from Welcome to Night Vale. And Carlos from Welcome to Night Vale. Okay. And Cecil again from Welcome to Night Vale. Listen, I'm gonna stop. I'm just, I don't, I don't. <gasps> this page right here, this dates it. This is, if I could only show you one page from this sketchbook, it would be this one. We got Cecil from Welcome to Night Vale. Don't know what's happening here. Hazel Grace from The Fault in Our Stars with her oxygen tank. I did not know how to draw that. A little bit more of the interweb series. You're welcome, girls. <laughs> okay, these are kind of cute. There it is. I was waiting for some super who lock to show up. I was not a full on super who lock. I was sort of a lock. That was kind of it for me. Didn't really participate in the other two. Home stuck. Okay. That was the beginning of this as well. A little bit of breaking bad for you. And that would be for my high school boyfriend that I was madly in love with. Lord of the Flies. Any of my, any fly heads out there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yup. Bitch, this is why you can't let me near things because I will personify them. I was, I was taking typefaces and personifying them. Are you kidding me? All right, that's kind of cute. Oh boy, yeah, that Lord of the Flies obsession happened for a good year, I would say. And that's the end of that one. Okay, now we begin with what I would call art journaling, which I was really into in early high school. Um, I was using Copics, I was using ink, watercolor, acrylic and stick in band-aids in there apparently I was really sort of getting into the whole like oh I was 
I was starting to get a little bit edgy with it. Uh, it was no longer just a sketchbook for me. It was now like a diary, a journal, you know. I gotta say, I already know that a good chunk of this is going to be about my high school relationship that just absolutely tore me apart at the time. Am I gonna get, hey, am I gonna get like flagged for showing naked bodies? Cause there's a lot when we get to the figure drawing sketchbooks. What was I saying? Oh yeah, this is definitely a lot of me being, you know, 16, 17 and just feeling so heartbroken over my, my high school boyfriend. Um, what if I can't stop hearing you in the raindrops? What if you already have? When will the moon just be the moon to you? What if you're always the sun of my skin? Did I come up with that or is that lyrics? These were like it for the time. Like I remember these went crazy on Tumblr. I see these on Pinterest still sometimes. Um, and I mean for, yeah, for my age, it was, it was cool. Um, oh God. <laughs> I was really going through it in late, mid to late high school. Like it was, uh, oh dear. Disgusting. Take control. Some of these I still like. This was the one. This was the moment. This got so big on Tumblr. People were getting this like tattooed on them. And this was about when I, I think I went to Ringling pre-college around this time. A lot of this is pretty much the same thing as the last one, just different content, but the look is the same. Oh yeah, Undertale, this was the Undertale time. Oh. <laughs> Embrace your beauty, every bit of it. Good. And I think at that point I um, truly had, maybe. <laughs> I think this is fun. I'm, I'm good with that. I think I would still make something like this. The marine biology time. If you watched my last video, you'll know that uh, this was a big part of my life for a while. Still is, but back then that's when I was sort of contemplating being a marine biologist. This is also 2016. I'm not sure which one, whether it be the last one or this one came first, but these pages are like thick. Like this is a, uh, I think it's made for junk journaling. It's made to hold media. Oh, yeah, you know, and what? like. I remember this page so fondly. Like obviously my art style looks very different now <laughs> and I've grown a lot, but this was like, I, this page just was one of my favorites I've ever done. This really dates it as well. Sort of seeing what's happening there. I think this is origami paper. Why was I more creative when I was like 17 or 18? Now this is college time. I think we're finally out of high school and into college. I had a sketchbook that I didn't show that had some stuff that I put in my portfolio for Ringling, but it just quite frankly was not exciting. It was like some figure drawings and the sketchbook was too big. It was a whole thing. So we're gonna jump right into one of the first sketchbooks I had while I was at Ringling. And it does still, I think, have stuff from before I actually was going to Ringling. This, oh my God. Okay. This drawing, 
y'all kids know who this is. And you might now because like the H3 podcast, but back when H3H3 H3 was like vlogging and, and doing different content, um, him and Hila just were like everything to me. I was obsessed with them. And I drew them when they went to a water park one time and wore these like matching outfits. And Ethan Klein actually saw it because he went on Tumblr and looked for um, like fan art. And he was like, okay, I'm ready to cringe. But then he saw this one and he was like, all right, this is pretty cool. This is pretty hip hop. Thanks a bunch. And do you guys know that that might have been one of the peaks of my life at the time? Sorry, some glue sticking. This was from when I was in Japan. This is like from the actual crepe place. This, I remember that went, that got a little crazy on Tumblr because it was, you know, we were all making jokes like this. This was doot doot. That was hilarious. That was the moment at the time. This was when Pokemon Go came out. Yes, <laughs> this is when Pokemon Go came out. Okay, I like this page. I like this still. Wow, Stranger Things, like, when they were still strange things very early on. I think I made these into stickers. I scan them and I turn them into stickers. That would sort of be upside down um, Mystic Messenger. <laughs> oh boy. December's a hard month. Yeah, you know what? I stand by that. December is a hard month. Ugh, the drawing on the Whole Foods bag, that gripped me. I love to like draw on, what is this called? Like recycled bags. Some figure drawing stuff. Probably not live in person. I feel like this was homework that I had done from like YouTube videos. Okay, so this one, I think, is some sort of homework sketchbook, probably from very early Ringling. Um, don't know if it's really worth going through. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's cool to see some of this stuff. This was very early, like I think freshman year figure drawing class. We did a lot of portraits and we had, like our homework would be go and do some, some drawings of people. And it would be like do 10 drawings of people around. Shoes, feet, hey, go ahead and take a good look at that for free. I did always enjoy drawing hands. That was like my favorite thing to do. Some ears and lips, <laughs> kind of scary, isolated. Noses and eyes, also scary when isolated. Okay, some, some Luigi's, some Waluigi's. an 
artist, you know how much it sucks to, to do this, whatever this is. Like, I get it, we're learning, but it's, it doesn't mean it doesn't suck. Okay, that's kind of it for that one. This was another figure drawing. I'm gonna have to go sideways with this. This was, oh, we're gonna have to zoom out. I apologize for the leg of the tripod. It's kind of ruining the, the moment. But this was a figure drawing notebook of some sort. I think I brought this to Fuse, which was this like figure drawing after school extra credit. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It was like a thing where you could go figure draw, not during a figure drawing class, but it was on campus. And I would do sort of my fun, colorful drawings during that time. This was, I think people were actually cosplaying on campus and they had like a, people would dress up as Disney characters and then you could go figure draw them. And that was very cool. Oh, this must have been from a notebook that I did not keep, but I wanted to keep certain pages. I really liked when I was doing stuff like this. Like this isn't so much my style anymore, but it, it kind of bleeds into what I do now and I just really enjoyed how this looked. Oh my gosh, we're really getting there now. This is the final one in the stack of, I kind of split it up into beginning of college uh, or like high school and beginning of college and then I have this whole stack over here that is all 2018 onward because after something happened in 2018, I had like seven sketchbooks. So that's kind of an era of its own. So this is pre seven sketchbook era. I think this was also still in like the art journaling space. Like I was fading out with that and finding something kind of new. I remember doing this in a Starbucks and absolutely hating it. And I still kind of hate it, but it's like, a, it's a little cool. This, this character, Stinko, I thought I was onto something. I was like, this is it, this is my big break. I'm gonna use this character and I'm gonna run him into the ground. And I kind of did. Sorry, this project, this was for a school project. It just, it like caused a war in, in our class. We like fought the teacher on it and uh, somebody cried. I think that somebody was me. Uh, and we like forced him to change our grades and extend the deadline. It was a, it was a mess. Teacher in question, by the way, George Pratt, love him to death as a man and a colleague. But during that year, I was about to fight. Hatsune Miku is kind of in every sketchbook, no matter what era it is, up until this day. That's my dad. This would be my Terraria character, by the way. I was going through this whole phase where I would use a red colored pencil and watercolor. And I really, I, I like that look, but I felt like I kind of overused it. So I, I stopped doing it. Okay, on to what I would call 
the sketchbook, the sketchbook renaissance. This was a time when I got these little things and I would just fill them up so quickly. And I felt so creative the whole time. And the brand, by the way, I kind of, I like, I had an, an issue where I couldn't stop buying it. And it is called Handbook. And I would buy another one. I just, I just haven't. I got too curious about other brands, but that has been my tried and true. So summer 2018. I remember around this time I was doubting everything and wanting to go into indie games, even though I was in the illustration program and I was getting concerned that maybe I was in the wrong major. And to this day, I don't know. <laughs> I think I was. I think I was in, this, in the right major, but I wish I would have learned more about motion design. You know, I would still like to work on an indie game. That's, that's still a goal of mine, but I think I really freaked out around this time because I felt like I had to be one thing. Sound familiar? Like that's exactly what I'm dealing with right now to some degree. I remember this drawing right here being one of my favorite drawings I had done of myself. And I'm not sure why, but it just, it kind of sparked something. Wow, these, um, these plants have stayed intact those are actual plants in there. And it's sort of falling apart now that I've just said that. Gatorland? Y'all, if you're a Floridian, you know Gatorland. That's better than Disney. Ah, and this was also sort of the beginning of my my crunchy, the crunchy Jamie. Like, I got very into climbing, got very into backpacking. I grew my leg hair out. I would wear my hair like back with a bandana. It was, it was a long phase, I would say. I mean, it's still a part of me now, but it was really a huge part of my life for a few years. So, okay, that, I think that has always sort of been like that. I just got a lot of use, like this is a very fat sketchbook, so I'm not surprised that pages are falling out. And that's some snakeskin. This is also, sorry, this is also, uh, this is fall 2018, so going right from summer into fall. This was my design and typography teacher, Edwin, who, I gotta say, I didn't learn much in that class, but uh, Edwin was a good time. Loved Edwin, he, he definitely, he split the class. Some people hated him, some people loved him, and I was one of the I love Edwin people, but I was so frustrated because I wanted to learn things in my design and type class because I was very into type. And I remember on the first day I introduced myself and I said Helvetica is my favorite typeface. <sighs> Which first of all, why would you say that? Why would you do that? And then Edwin said, oh, okay, why don't we um, all go around and say our favorite typeface then, since Jamie did that. This is oil paint. This is, um, I put an acrylic base down and I did it in like a pink color and then I went in with oil paint, which over time I think will deteriorate the sketchbook. It's looking a little nasty, but 
because I put that acrylic base down, I think it will slow down the, the ripening. Another oil paint situation. Having trouble with being creative. Wish I lived somewhere where the leaves turn red, sweats too much. I solved one of those issues. I do live in a place where the leaves turn red. At this time, I really thought I had figured out my style. Like I thought, oh, I found it. This is, this is it. This is it forever, for sure. This like long armed, noodly, tiny hands, wonky, kind of adventure timey style. And I hate to tell me, but that didn't really stick around. It, some elements stuck around, but I didn't stay too close to that sort of whole thing. I still really like this page. This was before I took a solo road trip to see my friend and roommate now, Emily, in Virginia. And I was getting all prepared and excited about it and made this page. Another Hatsune Miku. This is consistent. And this was right before I had to do, had to. I got the opportunity to paint Shaq and present him with the painting. And he put his big hands on my shoulder and it felt like somebody just sort of laid like a weighted blanket on me. And I've been able to slam dunk since that day. So something, he infused me with something. This is unlabeled, not, not sure. Okay, this was also 2018. This was fall 2018. I think this was a figure drawing sketchbook specifically. So we'll try to go through this one pretty quickly. was me trying to write a artist statement and I think that you know what it holds up to, to some degree I don't know it's a little high and mighty I don't actually looking at that made me feel a little sick <laughs> I'm assuming it's just immediately following the previous one. A lot of my sketchbooks at this time were, hey, that's Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. And then of course we have Keith Harry and Sufjan Stevens, of course, and um, Julia Roberts, oh my God. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, that I was keeping many sketchbooks at the same time because some of them were for class and some of them were for personal work and some of them were kind of both. This used to be my old logo. Mm, this is kind of relevant. This is my um, spider Sona, my, my spidey Sona, if you will, where I had a sticky nub. Hey, hi, how 
I y'all doing? I goofed up. Don't know how I did this, but I got the sketchbooks out of order for the next few. So the previous two that you just saw are actually supposed to be after the next two you're about to see. Don't know how this happened and you probably don't care at all, but this is my narrative and it's very important to me. With that, enjoy the rest of the video. Fall 2017, winter 2018. This was the beginning of the horizontal sketchbook, which I really, really enjoyed. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but I think it forced me to think a different way and explore some new compositions. Even though clearly I've gone ahead and done some vertical ones, but I liked having the option to do both. I remember this drawing being like a turning point for me because once again, I had thought, oh, this is it. This is my new art style that I'm just going to lean so hard into. I was really trying to find actively an art style at this time, but I was all over the place. And to this day, I believe that you don't necessarily actively find an art style as much as it just comes out of your fingers. And whatever comes out, that's your art style. And that would be Jeff Goldblum. This is a favorite of mine to this day. Just had a bit of an intermission because my camera did die and it has died um, three times now. So maybe it's time for me to get another battery, huh? Okay, spring, summer, 2018. Another horizontal sketchbook. And this one has, I think, quite a few. Maybe it's only at the beginning. It looks like it has some paintings. These were landscape paintings I did at the top of a mountain. No big deal or <laughs> whatever. These are oil paintings. These ones were gouache but this is oil. And I can feel that I didn't prime a couple of these and not sure if you can tell, but the oil paint is starting to yellow the page and it will eventually just sort of destroy it. Our homework was to do beach painting. And I remember going with my friend Yuka and we both simply didn't want to do it. We just didn't, we just didn't want to be there. Um, so we both did it as fast as humanly possible. And I don't think I got a very, incredible grade on my homework. These were all from a that same hiking trip from the other top of the mountain. What am I trying to say? I did all of these on one vacation. My dad and I went to Georgia just to hike and my intention was to paint while I was there. Very formative trip for me, by the way. I'm not gonna go into details because you know what? I don't think I want to. <laughs> right, of course, makes sense. These are some Florida paintings. These are paintings of a Florida, like summer stormy sky. And it makes me, it kind of makes my heart hurt a little bit to look at them. The 
This was shortly before I bought all of my backpacking gear and decided to do a week on the Appalachian Trail. And I do have a sketchbook from that. It was like a tiny little sketchbook I had brought with me on the trail, but I'm not going to show that only because there's a lot of writing in there as well about experiences that I had on the trail and people that I met. And this feels really personal to me. So I don't think we need to share that. This is another tiny one. This is spring, summer, 2019. This has a sticker by Dalton, Dalton Doodles. You know him, you love him. The Tomato Boys, if you have been looking at my stuff for a while, you will know that the Tomato Boys were an integral part of my life. They were just these two characters that uh, I don't, I like drew them and then they turned into something for me. I'm not sure what, nothing ever really happened with them, but for a while there I considered pitching a show. Basically someone had reached out from a company and I kind of pitched them Tomato Boys and we talked about it and then it kind of fell off the face of the earth, so. This is from a night exhibit at the Ringling Museum. Pretty sure I kind of just tagged along with someone else's class and drew with them. But that was the cool thing about Ringling is you could just kind of do that. This is my tent. This is my Nemo 2.5 pound incredible, incredible tent. I should do another one of these because so many things uh, have changed. Tsuki is dead now, just sort of a Suki update. We are getting closer and closer to the present. This is fall of 2019. And this was around the time that the whole like dark academia, cottage core thing was gripping me. And I was starting to plan and work on my thesis. This is when I visited Greenville with my parents. Uh, and if you didn't know, I actually ended up moving to Greenville from Florida. And I lived there for two or th three years and discovered it was not for me. It was a great place to visit. It was not a great place for me personally to live. I just didn't feel like I fit in very well. The nature was beautiful. Sorry, sorry, just having a visceral reaction because uh, this is clearly when I was getting into Minecraft story mode. And if you are close to me at all, you know that Minecraft story mode sort of has a grip on me that nothing else in my life has ever done. And seeing this is like, it's like seeing childbirth sort of happen, like the miracle of, of childbirth. Yeah, yeah, this was the very beginning of that because that would be Lucas Minecraft. Um, Man, what a time that was. These were, did I use 
use these in my thesis? I think I did. I did. I used these assets in my thesis. It is watercolor and colored pencil on watercolor paper. And I cut them out and put them in here because I wanted to save them. But I ended up scanning them and arranging them within my thesis book with sort of like other watercolor elements and I arranged it all digitally. And that's the end of that one. My hands are sweating, by the way, because the closer we get to the present, the more afraid I sort of feel. Oh. Okay, so this is out of order. So this is summer 2019, and I did kind of mess that up. So we're going back in time just a little bit. Right, I wondered where, where this stuff was, because I remember being pretty fond of the things in this sketchbook, yeah. This was my boy Sona. <laughs> Before I made some realizations about myself and my identity, I was uh, sort of drawing myself if I were a boy. And then I came out with some pronouns, so. That at the time was my Animal Crossing villager Sona. Some sort of a hawk with a little Patagonia fleece. This, these like series of pages where I have sort of an item and then a bunch of drawings of said item was a project that we had for my illustration class to figure out what we enjoy drawing most in order to discover what we might wanna work on for our thesis. Like I mentioned my thesis earlier, the, the mushrooms won. The mushrooms did win and my thesis was about mushrooms. Had a perm at this time. So my hair was actually a pretty similar length, but it was permed. I really forgot that I had so much thesis thumbnailing and, and planning happening. And I'm seeing some thumbnails that I wish I would have utilized. Okay, and enter 2020 actually. <laughs> yeah, I think Despite the fact that it was such a abysmal time, I was struggling to find a job. I had just gotten, you know, kicked out of school, sent home. We didn't get to walk for graduation. I was still somewhat filled with hope, or at least it seems that way in my sketchbook. So we did just sort of see like a full diary page. Anyways, what I was saying is that when you look at my sketchbook, it doesn't necessarily look really dreadful. I just noticed that I'm like tensing my shoulders. Like, it is April 14th, 2020, and I'm wondering if I should write in this some more. I have numerous thoughts swirling around my head constantly. I think I'm too lazy to write it all down. So I just won't, not right now. Oh, and also I did work in this out of order. This was one that I kind of skipped around because Sometimes it takes the pressure off of me to know that I'm not working chronologically and if I get more comfortable or better with time, it's not all going to be at the end.
These were, I was drunk. And this was, <laughs> I was hanging out in the game art labs with some game art friends and we were just sort of getting the first news about the coronavirus. We were joking about it. We were like, oh, <laughs> hope it takes me out. And then I wrote later, I wish I would have dated it. Pretty interesting to think back before any of this was serious. We joked about it at first. Lauren, Emma, Emily, and I were watching Princess Jellyfish when we got the email. We've moved on, we've had to move on, and it is detrimental to our, my, mental health when something reminds us that this is not normal. This is my favorite drawing of a tree I've ever done, by the way. And this was a manifesto that I wrote when I told myself, okay, I am going to be an independent artist. It was when all the job opportunities had fallen through and I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I knew that I had to make money. And so I just said, I'm gonna do Etsy, I'm gonna do Patreon, and I'm gonna be social media guy. And then my agent contacted me the next day. So. And then this page, I remember writing when I had first moved to Greenville and I felt so lonely and I was so confused about like my love life and what quarantine meant for that and things that had been kind of left unfinished due to being shoved out of college and rushed out pretty quickly without a lot of closure. This is... summer of 2020, spring or summer of 2020. This is writing about older men staring at me and how it's kind of sad. <laughs> I was really going through it at this time, sort of romantically. Um. I remember drawing this from the top floor of my apartment building and feeling so lonely. This was really quite the loneliness period in my life. After moving to Greenville without knowing anybody, living alone, in quarantine. It was one for the books. And by the way, I wrote 30 here. I know you probably can barely see that, but I wrote 7, 29, 30, and it throws me off every time, and I feel like something's going to happen on that date. Something mystical. This was a stranger I fell in love with, from afar. Classic, classic Jamie Green in 2020 art style. People came up behind me while I was drawing this, and it's interesting to just feel people behind you. They don't say anything. They just kind of watch you like a zoo animal. I think they're trying to be polite and not interrupt you, but I would so much rather they do interrupt me and say something rather than me feel sort of their breath on the back of my neck. And 
this is the final, the final sketchbook that I'm gonna be going through today. It is, I think from 2021. I have kept sketchbooks since, but they just haven't been very consistent. And I figured they're so recent that I kind of know what's in there and that would be better for a separate video. These were drawings that I was doing during Andrew Bird's live stream. Not a real concert, not like in person. painting that I kind of stuck in here. Same thing here. This was about going to the doctor for the first time in years. Um, This was from the Japanese Breakfast concert. That was my first concert, by the way. Never been to a show. Pretty good show. Pretty good first show to go to. So it's almost 2022 at this point. I had this sketchbook for a long time. And that would be it. That's it. I don't really know what to say. I feel like we, I just showed you the inside of my hole, but I, I hope you enjoyed. And I keep, um, I don't know how to leave this off. Keep on drawing. Keep on, this is a reminder to myself too that I need to keep using my sketchbook because looking back on these things is, it's kind of irreplaceable. Yep, that's it. <laughs>